Good afternoon, everyone. How's your week? It's, it's good that the sun is out and it's cooler now, so it's um, wonderful to enjoy the weather. Is it officially? It's officially autumn, right? Yeah. The summer. Uh, yeah, the summer's over. Autumn's here. <laughs> Yay! Mm -hmm. All right. Um, let's all continue praising God as we gather together as one family. Uh, those who are able, please stand as we declare the apostles. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. This is who we believe in this afternoon. Let us remember our Savior. And what is that? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what we are experiencing, where we are right now in our lives, how long we've been suffering. What matters is who we are worshiping. To whom the glory of everything that is happening will be directed to. So we remember Jesus Christ.
and these four people became the disciples, the followers of Jesus Christ. Okay, this is the summary that is compared with uh, two small uh, so, uh, stories. Next, please. And this is a subtle calling of the disciples. Jesus came and called and made them his disciples, the followers. And as I said, it was an unexpected calling because they were actually in the middle of working. They didn't know when Jesus was coming and calling of them to them. And the reaction or response from the disciples was the immediate one. At once, they left their hands and followed Jesus Christ. Right? So, whenever we are reading this Bible story, we tend to think about focusing on the response of the disciples, the follower of Jesus Christ. Why? Because of this typical word of at once, they left their nets and followed Jesus Christ, right? So whenever we are reading this Bible story of Jesus calling out the disciples, we tend to focus on the disciples. Oh, this is the story of the disciples. So in order for us to become a disciple of Jesus Christ, yes, we must discard. We must leave everything at once and then follow Jesus Christ. That's our natural reaction. Reading this special, uh, specific Bible story. But if we focus on Jesus Christ, not all the disciples, uh, the followers of Jesus Christ, and the meaning may change. So, because of the typical of your work, like at once, immediately, they just you know, left everything and followed Jesus Christ. Instead of focus on this uh, immediate response from the disciples, let us just focus on Jesus Christ as the key player of this story. Okay? Next, please. So, reading this text, focus on Jesus Christ. Then the meaning may change. Dramatically. Actually, this is a calling of Jesus Christ of the disciples, but in his time, there were many similar stories in Hellenistic culture, Hellenistic literature. In Hellenistic literature, teachers actually came and then called disciples and the disciples who were called would leave everything and at once they would follow the teacher. That was common in the Hellenistic literature in this time. <coughs> it is not it is not actually a specific in a special one written in the Bible. And at the same time in the Old Testament when the prophets was called it is actually the same. The calling of the prophets, like the uh, calling of uh, some uh, pro uh, prophets, then you know, the, the like, you know, teachers of the prophets will just come and just pick the disciples and they just you know, leave everything and just follow at once. But in the tradition of just rabbi, not the pro uh, prophets, but regular teachers, the tradition of the Jewish uh, the traditional Jewish uh, you know, calling of rabbi to the disciples are actually uncommon. Which means, in the tradition of uh, Jewish community, especially for rabbi or teacher, not in you know, the prophets, they wouldn't sit for the students. The rabbi the famous one would just sit on the chair, and the students, who was to be, the people who was to be his students, you know, 
hearing, uh, listening to you know, his you know, famous you know, the scholarly you know, the, the scholarship, they would come to the rabbi Baran Terumi. And this is very, very common in the Jewish uh, uh, community, Jewish tradition, especially for teachers. But this text was actually different from the calling of rabbi. You know, the common sort of rabbi, he wouldn't call the disciple. This is actually different. Different from the common story of rabbi and his the teacher and his student disciples. Actually, Jesus himself came to the disciples and he himself is seeking for the disciples. Different from the common story of rabbi. Next, please. And in Jesus' calling, the initiative, the starting point is from Jesus Christ. And their faith, the, the response immediate or the response at work, was not initiated by themselves. Their faith was initiated by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ initiated their faith. Why? Because first, Jesus came, and then Jesus saw what they were doing. But in this story, they didn't know if Jesus came, and they didn't know if they actually Jesus was seeing or looking at them working. This human part, the, 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 the part of the disciples, were actually nothing. Everything was initiated by Jesus. Jesus himself came. He saw and called. This is the major point of this story today. And also, one good point is that Jesus called them in his time. Jesus didn't wait. You know, if you are just uh, coming to see someone you know, working in, a, in the office or in a business, what would you do? You might have to wait until they finish their work, right? You are a teacher, you are a professor, you are a student, you, know, you are in a class. But your parents or your friends just came to see you in a class. What would they do? They would wait until, they would wait until you finish your class, right? This is very common thing. But Jesus came and saw and called the disciples in his time. He has all the authority for making disciples. He just called in the middle. And then and they didn't know when or if he would come to them or not. And then they responded. After the initiation of Jesus Christ, everything, and then they responded. Yes, like, I, I, I don't want to dis, uh, disregard their faith. For example, if you're in a class and your friends are monkey, <laughs> no, don't know, hey, you yourself, just come. Come, let's go. Then you might want to stay in your class. Or if you're a professor and your friends, hey, so why are you? Let's, let's go. You might want to ask them, just wait, wait. Don't you see I'm just working? Don't you see I'm teaching? Don't you see I'm studying? Wait until my job is done. But a good part from them was the, the proper response. But my point is that Jesus initiated everything. That's the good point. That's the point. So, what about us? Through baptism, we Christians are called into the community of faith. We become a member of Christians. I think. 
This is called the wrong. Actually, it's the previous one. Can you find the correct one? Did I send you the, the, the wrong one? I have it in time. But just for, for your. Uh, Yes, this is the uh, this is the one. Uh, you just calling at times. After you just calling, they followed him at once. That's the and without the uh, uh, person. And the good thing from their part is that they didn't know for what they were called. They didn't know the meaning of fishers of men. I know fishers or the fishers. And they do the fish, and they catch fish, right? But what about fishers of men? <laughs> but we don't know. Especially the disciples didn't know what is the meaning of fishers of men. But still, they just follow. And then one other point is that they didn't know where they are going. Jesus just said, just follow me, and didn't know where I am going. So, they might want to ask a question. Okay, I'm going to follow you, but where are you going? That would be a natural question from them, but they didn't ask that question, but follow me. That's the thing. And it is Jesus miraculous, powerful world that changed their life. They didn't meet Jesus before, but they just followed him. Their faith to follow was caused by the power of one, so that's why they just followed him. And a good thing to apply for us is this. They didn't know what they are doing. They didn't know where they are going but followed, and in the middle of their following Jesus Christ, they realized what they had to do. In the middle of following Jesus Christ, they realized where Jesus is going and where they have to go. Until they are following Jesus Christ, they did But they found out and realized when they are walking together with Jesus Christ in their life. So this group of disciples finally made a community of faith, the church. And they become fishermen, uh, fishers of men, which means they actually evangelizing everyone to make others the disciples of Jesus Christ. And then they all together, together with Jesus Christ, they were able to move on to the cross. Jesus died for us and resurrected, just like Jesus Christ, the disciples of Jesus Christ went to the cross. They eagerly took the risks of their life and then die and secure salvation. Next. Next. Okay, I'm gonna okay. So this story you know, was known as the calling of Jesus, uh, the, the, the Jesus calling of the disciples can be understood as the story of the formation of the Church of Jesus Christ. Jesus, we are in a coming to this, right? Actually, the reason why we are here is that Jesus came to our life and called us to the presence of God. That is why we are just called out of the world and sitting here as the community of heaven. Without Jesus first coming to our life, we would have to be, we couldn't 
je, že je listo, ktoré som tam. Jesus came, in the middle of our life. And Jesus came and called us suddenly just like others. And now Jesus is calling us to follow him. Follow him. And we don't know what is the meaning of following him in our contemporary life. Contemporary life. Right? But Jesus coming and Jesus calling, I think that it actually represents or reminds us of the grace of God. We are, we are actually like uh, the other people, or we were actually busy, right? Being in Korea, one of the typical things that I can notice is that living in Korea, whatever you are doing, makes you busy. Always busy. Always busy is something. But Jesus comes to your life. Jesus comes to you. And actually he is watching and seeing you working busy. Actually, we don't know whether Jesus came to our life already or not, but Jesus already came to us and seeing us now. And Jesus wants to make us fishers of men, which means he wants to be wants us to be saved. Actually, Jesus wants us to be saved by himself. And then Jesus wants us to go to the world to save others, just like we were saved. And the important thing is that our salvation, salvation of life, is not initiated by our action. It was not initiated by our action at once or immediately. Action. But it is all initiated by Jesus Christ. He came to us. He saw us and called us to make us fishers of men. And then <coughs> we realize that this all about the grace. Our life is all about the grace of God. The reason we are here is all about the grace of God. The reason we are not just working here is all about the grace of God. That is the realization when you are thinking about Jesus Christ. Then, it is time that we have to realize we are going and why we have to do as disciples of man. But the thing is that we will know where we are going and what we have to do only after our following Jesus Christ. When we are just stepped away from his calling, we don't know what we have to do and where we have to go. Only when we are actually responding to the calling of Jesus Christ, we realize that, yes, we are doing something for Christ, that we are going to the cross together with Jesus Christ. Amen. So, we have to think about what it means by leaving everything behind us and follow Jesus Christ at once in our contemporary life, especially spiritually. We know that we are called. Jesus, we know that Jesus came to us. Jesus called us. Then our reaction must be related with leaving everything behind. What does it mean by? We are students. We are teachers. We are just workers. But what does it mean by leaving everything behind to follow Jesus Christ in our life? Probably it's going to be shift or change of our goal, the goal of our life. Not only for us, probably most likely for Jesus Christ, living for Christ. Yes, and you know, only when 
we follow or we ask our fathers to see. This is our steps on deep snow, right? Actually, I just want to share my story in New Jersey and just know close my servant. You know that I was at this studying masters in Atlanta and went to New Jersey. The big difference is about the snow. In Atlanta, just like, you know, at most, you know, one centimeter, so, and only the traffic would stop. Anyway, in New Jersey, one snow, it is like now. So, like every Sunday in the winter, I have to worry about weather or not. It when it's snow. Because if there's a snow, every American church will close. So, Korean immigrants will just not open anyway. So, we have to drive. You know, come early and drive, you know, be moving every snow. Most like uh, the, the highways, the, 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 the snow will be removed. Yeah. Especially when they are snowing, the, the, the trucks will just move away the, the snow. So you can drive. But to your park, the parking lot, no one would you know, remove the snow, especially all in the morning on Sunday. Then, what should you do? You have to bring your shovel over anything, but you can remove every uh, snow for the uh, parking lot by uh, 200 meters or 300 meters. So, you have to walk on the deep snow. Then what do you have the deep snow? The shoes. You just say, uh, okay, you know, the, year, the snow will bring your clothes and the uh, snows inside of your shoes, right? But, there's a way that you can escape from that and avoid this situation. What can you do? <laughs> Just like this. Summer, even if it is so early morning like now, 8 or 9 in the morning, somebody will let walk toward the parking lot. Then, what's your option? <laughs> and, yes, 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 you're right. <laughs> you are stepping on someone else's step, footprints, and then trying to find the, the someone's in the footprints, and then follow. Then we will be okay. We will be fine. We know that we have to follow Jesus Christ, but we don't know where we have to go and what we are doing. But, we know, Jesus Christ already went to the cross before us. And for us, to be a disciples of Jesus Christ, a follower of Jesus Christ, means to follow the step of Jesus Christ. And we we'll know, to the end of these small steps, there's a parking lot for the, the cross, and you know, there we will preach the gospel to our friends to make them the disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for your calling. You just came first, and you saw us first, and then you called us in the middle of our day, our jobs. We didn't know whether you just came to our life, or you just came. And we didn't know you are watching over us, but you just saw us, and you called us, and you made us a follower of the disciples of Jesus Christ. And we know that this is all about the grace of God. Our salvation is all about the initiation of Jesus Christ. So, today, we just confess that we will follow you. Immediately, just like the disciples of you in 2000 years ago. And you just want to preach the gospel as a disciple. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Yes, Father, we continue to follow you, follow your cross. You know, Father, that uh, this calling that you have given us is not easy, but it is sure. And so, Father, as one church, we stand victorious, and we are here heeding your call to use us as you wish. Uh, so take your tithes and our offerings as a symbol of God, that all that we are is yours. Use us as you as you please. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy birthday to you. Should I say happy birthday to you? Happy birthday to you. Yay, we have cake later. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, uh, oh, <laughs> sorry, I'm speechless. <laughs> okay, uh, just a few announcements uh, before we proceed to lunch. We want to welcome those who are new with us. Hi, <laughs> don't, don't be surprised. Pastor will ask you to introduce yourselves later. Later. <laughs> so prepare yourselves, guys. If you have time after the service, we'd also want to talk to you and um, maybe introduce to you uh, the more information about the church. And of course, after this, we will have a small snack slash lunch, depending on how much you eat. <laughs> okay. And for next week's prayer, it will be Sanya, and scripture reading will be by Chaya. <laughs> And we are pleased to announce that next, well, that's two weeks from now, in a special day, not just, oh, okay, it moved. <laughs> um, let's do this in order. First is October uh, 15, there will be a movie day. I don't know what will be, there will be a movie day. So if you are free, please join us for a movie. And then the week after, I believe, no, two weeks after, we will have the trek, a small trek. So as I said last time, if you are not yet ready, you have time to be ready one month and three, <laughs> three or four days to get ready for that trek. Um, so it's gonna be on a Saturday. So hopefully if your schedule uh, matches up, you can join us. And Pastor Saul will be away on the 8th. He will leave for the US right after your service next week. and. Fly and then come back. So let's pray for a smooth and safe uh, travels for him. That will be a blessing for you. Uh, aside from that, you have nothing else. Thank you.
Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forevermore. Amen. I'm 